We love old cemeteries and churchyards, so come with us as we explore these places for the past. We're just driving up the Ayrshire coast and did a bit of an emergency stop. We are in the village of Kirk Oswald and that is their church, which, uh, yeah, how could you not do a stop? Let's go for a wee look. And if you're into your Robert Burns poetry, three of the characters from his famous poem Tam O'Shanter are buried here. And that sign tells you all about it. Uh, there is Tam O'Shanter, Kurt and Jean and Suter and Johnny. They're all buried in this churchyard. So let's go and see if we can find their graves. Oh, <laughs> conveniently, uh, there's another sign that tells you where they are. So let's go and find Tam O'Shanter's grave. But on the way there, the first thing that we see as we walk through the gate is Private T. Dalrymple of the Gordon Highlanders from 1917. And he died that we might live. Oh, and there's another war grave over there. And I've just seen there's another two over there. So yeah, I was not expecting a lot of war graves in this wee churchyard. Let's go and say hello to these guys. This is Sergeant Young of the Royal Air Force from 1941. And uh, Lance Corporal Whitmarsh from the Royal Engineers from 1941. Yeah, so over here we've got the last wargrave I can see in this wee corner and this is Lance Corporal Gibson who is, oh he's a Canadian so he's a long way from home and he died in 1916, gone but not forgotten, definitely not forgotten. This is quite interesting on the back of the stone, we'll look at the front in a second, but this says this burial place belongs to Andrew Sloan. Does that say right in Kirk Oswald, containing three graves breadth and two graves in length? So that's his uh, his little private plot. And let's go on the front and see if it's got anything for us to see. This is the other side of that stone, and it's got here lies the corpse of John Gray in Dal and Mason's Mistakes. <laughs> there's not enough space for two L's, so there's a small L there. Dalwat and Joanna Gowdy, his spouse, who died the 21st day of June, wow, 1725, aged 51, erected by the said Joanna. That's really cool. And next to it, that one is 1725, and this one is 1774. And 1774 is for this stone is erected by Douglas Kennedy in memory of his father. Scipio, Scipio Kennedy, Scipio, there's a new name for us, who died June 1774, aged 80. Also the body of the said Douglas, who died in 1781. This cemetery is amazing. This is quite a grand stone. There's a few quite grand stones in this churchyard. One over there, and that's quite nice. And uh, over there, there's some obelisks. And this is erected by James Kennedy, farmer in Lochlands Parish of Mabel, in memory of Marion McJanet, his wife, who died in 1848. Another quite old one, I'm guessing, here is the corpse of Anne McClure, spouse to William Rowan in... D Delina Duana, it's a place I guess, who died April the 8th, 1774, aged 43. I wonder if that's got anything on the back. No, it hasn't. <laughs> some of them have, and some of them haven't. And this is another one from 17, oh, 1703. We're almost back. That is uh, that's quite impressive. Almost back into the 16s, which doesn't happen very often. Let's go and look at this big grand bit. This has got the original stone up there and then an additional bit down on the bottom. And that's from the 1840s. And that is from, I think it's probably all got, yeah, 21st of May and then the bit with the date should be there and uh, isn't. This took a bit of figuring out on this big stone. It's got different fonts which confuse my wee brain. It says, this stone is erected by Hamilton Young, farmer, in Glen Lochry, in memory of his son, David Young, late schoolmaster, which is in a funny font, it took a bit of reading, of Dreghorn, who died February the, twin, sec, February the 2nd, 2D, February the 2nd, 1829, and also his daughter, who died also in 1829. Oh, there's a, a tombstone from 1961, so that's getting a bit more modern, but there is Andrew Crawford, Dipple. That must be a place as well, surely. To the memory of his wife, Marion Arthur, who died 3rd November 1855, aged 73 years and 6 months. Don't forget the 6 months. That's it. There's so many nice stones in here. I'm not sure how well this is working because it's very windy. So a wee fluffy microphone I'll be doing over time. But uh, let's go and see this little one down here. 
it's always funny when you're trying to read what things say and figure out words because you start to expect patterns like here lies the body of and here lies something but this one is uh, here lies and you can't make out that word there but that's interred David Blaine who died in 1725 so he was uh, and then John Blaine who died 17. 17- 10? Wow, so these are all really, really old and in very, very good condition. By which I mean they're still legible, which is always a bonus. This wee stone looks quite old, it's got the two little figures on the side and uh, something in the middle that's just about gone. Uh, I can't tell you when it's from because on the back it's got the names of the people. Here lays the corpse of John Robson, his age whatever it's there, I can't quite read it. James Robson, his age... can't read that either. <laughs> and Margaret. So they've all got their ages, but not a date. Unless the date used to be up the top there, which I, I can't quite see. Again, I might see it better looking back at the video than I'm seeing it looking at it now, live. Ah, oh, wow. And just over from uh, the Robson family, there's this with its crossbones. And the shield there with two sort of trident things and two little floors. Let's see if this has got anything interesting written on the front of it. Ah, unfortunately, a big chunk of it has gone, which is always a shame, but it's uh, the joy of sandstone. But we do know it's from 1777. We've been to a few sort of 1800s, early 1900s graveyards recently. This is nice to get back into proper, proper ancient history, because here we've got the winged face and the hourglass and the crossbones and down at the bottom, the skull. There's no date, but you can look at that and say, yeah, 17 something. And this is the back of that wee stone, and it's got a nice wee heart at the top, and it says, here lies the corpse, and T-H-E, the H and the E are put into one, corpse, C-O-R-P-S, of Margaret Meninch, spouse to John Brunn, who died April the 10th, 1730 something. Her age 39, so yeah, we are back in the 1700s. And everywhere I look over here, there's another interesting gravestone to go and run across and have a wee look at. This one is possibly one of the most intricate ones that we've ever seen. It's got uh, a heraldic shield and a hand there, a, a sort of knight's fist holding a wheel and lots of uh, chains and swirls and stuff. Let's have a look at the front and see if it's got who it actually belongs to. Uh, yep, yeah, it's the first thing you see is 1718. So yeah, we are all, these are all 1700s. 1729 down there. This is so cool. This was erected in 1883, so it looks quite uh, quite good condition. And it's the corpse of John Brown in Littletown, who died in 1724. He's 50. And Janet McGreen, his spouse, who died in 1738, and lots of other names going down to 1774. And the reason they've got this big commemorative stone is the enclosed tombstone commemorates the grand and great grandparents of the poet Robert Burns. That is really quite impressive. It's one of the more sort of imposing ones on this little row, but yeah. So there's Robert Burns's grandparents and great grandparents. There's so many really nice tombstones here. Here is interred the corpse of Stuart McNeil, I think, spouse to John Davidson. So Stuart was a lady, <laughs> spouse to John Davidson, who died 24th of November 1772. Well, that's an assumption that Stuart was a lady, that this wasn't a same-sex couple. I, I don't know, I'm gibbering now. Aged 27. And also John Davidson, who died in 1806, and Marion Davidson, his sister, who died the 23rd of January, AD 1810. This is such a good graveyard. I could be here for a while. Built on quite a steep hill, but we're going up the hill because I can see something right in front of me and also up there. So let's go and say hello to Ca oh, Captain. Captain H.K. McSee, right of the Royal Scots Fusiliers from 1944. 
and I'm going to try and keep going at the top of the hill which means I'm going to get more and more out of breath the higher up I get and uh, I'll probably have to stop and start again but no, we're here, there is Lance Corporal Jameson of the Australian Pioneers from 1917 at the very top of the hill as places for the past go that is not bad at all is it? what an amazing wee graveyard I am so glad that we stopped that's a wee bit different. That to me it looks like it's clay. It's been fired as opposed to stone. That just looks like, uh, you know, like your great granny's fireplace sort of thing. Yeah, very nice. It's funny how in these small graveyards the names seem to be like grouped together. That is uh, John Murray of Maidens, but his sister was Margaret Marshall. And the one next to it is Lawrence with an A, not an E, Marshall, who died in 1844. And behind that was erected by John Marshall of Seafield, in memory of his father, John Marshall, who died in 1874. So this is the Marshall corner of the cemetery. Hello again, Captain Wright. Right, let's head down and have a look at the church. That's a really cool old granite obelisk. Well, old, it dates back to 1876, so that's quite nice. The stone next to it unfortunately has gone, but that goes back to 1865. But on the other side, look at this one here. This is just, I am like a pig in boop. This was erected by John Hugh and Alexander McMaster in memory of their parents, Viz. Alexander McMaster, who died 18th of June 1722, and Grise. Hunter, Gris Grizzle, Grizzle Hunter, his spouse who died also in 1772 and their daughter Jane who died in 1792. So this cemetery is mostly all 1700s. The one next to it has got a spouse who died 1740. I'm guessing there was a 17 before that, 1771. And on top of it, it's got writing too, uh, about that says, can't really see what that says, William McMaster, I think it says William McMaster, yeah anyway, that is a really nice wee stone in a graveyard that is full of really interesting and really nice wee stones. Let's head back up the hill past William Gray who died at Park Farm in 1947, so that's uh, comparatively a bit more modern. I don't know what's up this hill, I don't think there's very much and a lot of what there is has fallen over. That's the joy of uh, building your cemetery on a big hill. That is Archibald, what does that say? Archibald something. I'm coming up towards the top of the hill beside uh, old Archibald there. That looks like a chimney pot to me. Uh, no, I take it back. That is a chimney pot. And that's a very, very old stone that's now gone. And behind them is a stone that is sacred to the memory of Hannah Dews, who departed this life at Killeen, which is not far away from here, in 1838, age 16. Quite a nice couple of Celtic crosses up here. This is in loving memory of Helen Primrose Marshall, beloved wife of the Reverend Donald M. McLean, M.A., who was born in 1869 and died in 1954. And up the back, just to make them feel quite small, because that's a nice cross and that's an amazing cross, in memory of Robert Marshall, who died in 1886, and of his wife, who died in 1832, and their daughter, who died in 1954. And she was the wife of a reverend, Reverend Donald McLean, M.A., which is probably why they've got such a nice thing in this corner of the cemetery. I use words like old and new sort of relatively. We're into a slightly newer part, because this is erected by Robert Ray in memory of his parents, James, who died in 1889, and his mother, who died in 1890, I think that's this. You probably see it better on the camera than I can in the real life. And at the very bottom is uh, Andy above Robert, who died in 1923. So we're just moving along this uh, the top of this big steep hill, so I don't keep trying to walk up and down it, past uh, erected by John in memory of his wife, Helen, who died in... 18 something but again that's quite clear that's quite clear that's quite clear that bit's gone right let's keep going along here because this is obviously the grandest corner there's a big chunky thing there and a couple of obelisks and a draped urn and all the stuff that you know you want to see 
this is quite cool. This is one of those gravestones where uh, it's to Mary Cuthbert, wife of James McFadden, and the rest of it is about James McFadden, who's a collector of inland revenue in Glasgow. Bet, bet he was very popular, he was a taxman. And it says that she was obedient to the faith, she walked humbly with her God, and her goodness and lifelong devotedness are a precious heritage to her husband and children. Oh, what nice. That's quite a nice draped urn on top of this one that is in loving memory of Andrew T.L. Dunlop, beloved husband of Janet Cowan, who died at Maidens, which is just up the coast a little bit from where we are in 1938, and to Janet, who died in 1962. Uh, next to them, there's an even more impressive obelisk. And then, uh, yeah, let's head down here in search of some older stuff. This is quite sad. This is uh, sandstone erosion in action. If you were to poke that, it would all just fall off. So this will immortalise them on uh, on a YouTube channel. <laughs> Erected by their sons to the memory of their parents, James Gray, a blacksmith from this village, Kirk Oswald, who died in 1837, and Elizabeth Findlay, his spouse, who died in 1853. Also their sister, who died in 1819, and James, their brother, who died in 1832. So we're heading inexorably down towards the church. I do hope we can get in for a wee look, or if not, we can at least have a wee look through the barred up door. Uh, let's go to the stone on the outside first. That is in memory of John Hutchison, who died at Glenside Lodge, Kilzane, Killane, in 1879, aged 80. I keep saying Kilzane, it's pronounced Killane, if you're wondering. And uh, there's quite a nice stone erected by John Gillespie in memory of his mother Isabella from 1838 there, and this is the, uh, the inside of the church. Some local uh, miscreants have been in there carving their names on the wall, but uh, yeah, I don't think there's much for us to see. Let's keep going down and round and, uh, and stuff. And you come along and you see something like this and you say, oh that's nice, that is a nice stone to Janet McCutcheon, who is the spouse of a reverend, or obviously spouse of a reverend, so she's got a big stone, who died in 1855. But then against the back wall you see that, which is, uh, yeah, I, that is, yeah, that's amazing. I don't know how legible it all is, not very, I don't think, but it's got a big, a big shield thing going on there with a, a triangle with a horseshoe in it, and then it has got some writing round the side, so I'm going to spend a couple of minutes figuring out if I can see any of that at all, and if I can, I will, of course, let you know. I don't want to get too close because as you can see there that is uh, departing from the stone behind it but down there it says R-I-C-H-A-R-T-S-P-O and then it runs out so I don't know what that says is it Latin? You guys might know if you do please tell us in the comments because I would love to know unfortunately the rest of it is all gone there's uh, you look at things and you think, is that the remains of text? I don't think so, I think it's just the way that it's uh, it's weathering. But you can still see, like I said, the big shield and some words. So I uh, have to Google it actually and see if that is recorded anywhere else. Oh, and this one is trying to hide from us by being sideways on, but we spotted you. You can't hide from us, Sergeant Andrew, a pilot from the Royal Air Force who died in 1942. We sadly miss him and his loving smile but it is not forever, he's only left us for a while. Yeah, the wind is getting up and we've come into the late 1800s in memory of Lottie B.M. Chapel, who died in 1896, aged nine. That's quite a, quite a big piece of stone and quite nicely carved, nice little uh, flowers and stuff on it. And then there is an older stone, I'm guessing, that is unfortunately very, very weathered, apart from down the bottom, where it says John Alexander, who died in 1828. Unfortunately the wind's starting to get up so I'm going to have to uh, bin this because it's cold and it's also raining so uh, there we go let's uh, let's head back towards the uh, the gate and that is William Niven and he is from 1796 this is such an old cemetery and then the said William Niven at the bottom who died in 1806 that's a nice stone I like these ones that are picked out in white that is uh, CJ and Agnes Gibson unfortunately it's been picked out and it says uh, it's quite difficult to read in loving memory of their daughter Elizabeth 
uh, who died at Kirkoswold in 1898. That's a very nice looking stone, a sort of iconic looking gravestone. And there's another older one down, yep, definitely older, and this one has been, uh, has had the text picked out in black paint, which helps us a lot. And it says, erected by John Niven in Balachneel, in memory of Robert Niven, his father, who died 7th of October, I thought I said 70th. Oh, it's been a long day. 7th of October, 1799, aged 86. And Margaret Roth's mother, who died, and again, there's a missing mistake, mother, with her, oh, <laughs> can't fit it in, just put it up there, no one will notice, who died 28th of April, 1793, aged 78. And John himself, who died in October 1822. That is another really nice stone. It's got some lovely detailing around the top. Right, let's go up and see if we can get into the church. According to the sign on the gate, this church dates back to the 12th century. So, uh, yeah, that's quite an old church. It's got a font inside it. There's the Bruce font, I think that's called, from the sign that we saw. And... Uh, Oh, you can't probably get in through this hole that I'm leaning through and then go and have a wee look in there, but I don't think we're going to bother because that could be uh, a bit painful if we fall trying to get back out again. I keep trying to head towards the entrance and I keep finding things I want to stop and, uh, and look at. This is to the memory of David Ferguson, a farmer in Balkena, son of William Ferguson, late in... Oh, what's that say? Drumgurloch, Drumgurloch, who died in 1797. So yeah, this is so cool. I've never seen so many 1700s gravestones in such good condition in one place ever. This one is another one that's got something that we've never seen, so I'm still not getting out of this place, and I've just seen uh, what's behind it. So we're <laughs> here for a while yet. But it says, here lies the corpse of James Brackenick. And that's a U, but it's a W. Who? Something L I. If the U, if the U is a W, that says lived. Uh, I think it says lived. Maybe lived in Walt Ockenblain, who died. And again, makes a mistake. D I tiny E, very very small D. May twenty fourth, seventeen o eight, aged fifty nine. And also his big bit missing, who aged 1739, aged 79. That is uh, another really cool stone. Let's see what's on the front of it. Ah, again, it's another one that is, uh, it is to use a technical term that I think is accurate, delaminating. It's all coming apart, which is a real shame. Right, and let's go and look at that one that I saw over my shoulder when we were uh, wandering about. And that says, da, 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 it says something there, but I can't really make it out. But I think that says 16. Ooh, could we be back in the 1600s? Two little heads and uh, some tools of the dead person's trade on the front. Uh, uh, oh, I don't know. I think that could say 1600. It looks like it might. On the other side, there's two little figures. And there is some uh, some text there, but it's quite far gone. And then a wee man down the bottom there. That is, uh, that's another amazing little tombstone. Now the wee map at the door had something interesting on it. It says refugee grave. So this corner here is a refugee grave. Who that refugee was, no idea. What they were a refugee from, uh, also unfortunately no idea. But it's uh, probably an interesting story that we'll go and Google and find out. Oh no, I want to go home, but I keep getting sidetracked by things with hourglasses and columns and faces and uh, I think that is supposed to be a boat and a winged flying face and some waves and stuff. Oh, there's too much to see here. This is just uh, uh, amazing. Let's keep going here. Let's see if we can find Tam O'Shanter's grave, which I'm not holding out much hope for because we've not found any of the other ones that we've been looking for. But yeah, let's go up here first. Skull, crossbones, digging tools, hourglass, and on this one there is the winged skull and uh, yeah, lots and lots of the sort of iconography and symbolism we've really come to expect from old Scottish graveyards. Okay, we were looking for really old it says Memento Mori along the top, and that says 1618. I think that definitely says 16 there, so I'm having that. That's a 1600s gravestone. 
and that is John with the N the wrong way around. John Ramsey and Janet Cowdy, but there's nothing on that, there's no uh, extra text. That's quite crudely implemented, but it's still, that's definitely 16 something. That's a 1685, it's uh, difficult to see again, but you can probably see it better on the photos than I can in real life. This must all be documented online somewhere, like when we went to St Bridget's Kirk and we found the PDF file with the, all the inscriptions on it that somebody had done as a labour of love, because uh, some of these look really, really interesting. So this is who died February the 5th, 1764. It's, it's all so old, and compared to a recent trip to Ireland where a lot of the inscriptions were gone, even going back to the 1600s, you still got inscriptions that you can see. Right, let's see what this one has got. This has got the face and the flowers and... Oh, that's different. That's uh, not seen that before. That is a set of scales. I get the sort of the weighing of the soul or the weighing of, of justice or something. But yeah, that's really cool. Let's see if we can see anything on the other side. Yes, and uh, has it got a date? Blah, blah, blah. James Kennedy, who died at Kirkoswald, and Agnes, Agnes Ferguson, his spouse, and all the stuff with the date has gone. Oh, flip. So I was heading for the gate, which is now uh, away over there. I'm actually getting further and further away from the gate. So what have we got here? We've got a couple of skulls and some crossbones and a little figure and an hourglass and... I don't know what that is. <laughs> Looks like rolls of carpet, but I'm sure it's not. Let's see if we can see anything on the front of it. Curtain Jean on the new stone at the bottom. Here lies the corpse of Jean Aird, spouse to Andrew Kennedy. Uh, let's see if we've got a... 1735. He died in July 1735. I've only seen one of these big tabletop tombs, and that's a very, very big tabletop tomb, and that is to the memory of the Reverend. Ah, it's big because it's a Reverend. Reverend Mr. Matthew Braggart. Bigger? Bigger. Matthew Bigger, who died in 1806. So we found Burns's grandparents, great-grandparents, and Curtin Jean. We've not found Tam Ashantar, but uh, as you might be able to see, it's now starting to pee down with rain. So uh, Tam is in here somewhere, I'm sure he's doing fine. I'm now definitely, definitely, definitely leaving. But, 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 just, just, just one more, just, no, 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 we're leaving. Don't care if it does say 1754 there, we are definitely leaving. But <laughs> it's now pouring with rain, eesh. My GoPro is now getting very wet, but just to finish it off completely, there is the War Memorial, 1914 to 1919, they died that we might live, that's quite a nice cross, and I've just seen a Commonwealth War Grave over there that I missed, but I'm not going back in because it's a bit wet. Mm -hmm.